Hello and welcome to Share Talk. I am Matt Brown. I'm joined today by Alex McDonald, who is CEO, and David Sefton, who is Executive Chairman, both of Anglo African Oil and Gas. So, David, Anglo African Oil and Gas, who are you? Where do you operate? And what do you do? Well, we're a company which listed on AIM in March of this year. Mm -hmm. um, we're uh, an oil producing company with a field in the Republic of Congo, West Africa. Um, it is an existing producing field, um, producing a small amount of oil at the moment, but it's one where we have uh, the exciting upside to drill into two layers, um, deeper than, than the current production horizons, um, one of which we've already drilled into in the past, or the company's already drilled into in the past, and we know there's producible oil, and the other one which has extremely high potential if we can find oil there, uh, the layer called the, uh, the Geno. So we, uh, we've raised a, a substantial amount of money, just uh, £10 million pounds, um, in March. We have a fully funded drilling programme. We've completed a lot of the corporate work over the last few months. Um, and um, we're just about to move into the most important period in this, which is to drill a new well alongside the two existing wells. Uh, it's a multi-horizon well, as, um, and Alex will explain more when we come to I'm sure there'll be some questions on the... Uh, the nature and time of the drilling program, but we're fully funded for it. Um, and uh, we're very, very excited about the, uh, the future and see what the next few months hold. And you're operating in the Republic of Congo, is that correct, David? Yeah, the Republic of Congo, which is the former French colony on the north side of the River Congo, opposite the Democratic Republic of Congo. Republic of Congo is a very different place from the DRC. It's, um, uh, it's, it's a former French colony. It's a long history in the oil industry, producing about a quarter of a million barrels of oil a day with several of the majors like ENI and Total present. And we're based in, in Pointe Noire, which is the uh, sort of heart of the oil industry there. So you're in the company of some big oil majors. Uh, and indeed, and our field sits right in the middle of um, where these majors are putting a lot of, um, a lot of their development mm -hmm. dollars into bringing on stream some very big production from the Jenna and the Litch and Jelly. Super. And you've had, um, I believe, on the 24th of July, an operations update. <coughs> so there's an RNS announcement to the market. Um, and it stated the rig in use uh, by your preferred contractor is available to use by the company to drill one of your wells. So can you just talk us through that RNS and explain what that means for investors and potential investors? Yeah, I mean the um, the process of getting going on on the uh, the new well because that's that's really the critical issue as to what as to what this company mm -hmm. is worth. We're also doing, as Alex explained, some workovers on on two of the existing wells, but the um, the scale of that is not really transformational. Whereas this new well is the one where we we'll really get to see what this field is worth, um, and people are very keen to know exactly when we can start drilling and. Um, uh, September the 30th is the date we've been given at the moment. You never know in Africa there might be a small amount of slippage on that, but it's, it, it gives us a fairly clear, clear route into, into drilling in the early part of the autumn. So, Alex, can you update us on, on the operations as they currently are? Um, let's talk about TLP 103 first, because that is the major well we're going to drill. Um, we've gone out to tender for all the uh, services and uh, supplies that we need, because... Um, Anglo-African Oil and Gas has elected to drill this well themselves rather than going out to one of the big contractors and saying, please deliver us a well. So we're contracting for the rig and all the ancillary services. So that was a tender process of about 100 companies. Uh, we've whittled it down now down to 40 companies in about 20 different disciplines. Um, that's largely complete. And we expect to start awarding contracts in the next two to three weeks. So, Alex, uh, can you explain what the plans are for TLP 103 and, and what timescales investors could be looking at? TLP 103 is a multi-horizon well. Mm -hmm. uh, the horizons are R1, R2, which is the top horizon. Then we've got the Mango, which is a very um, well-understood um, uh, horizon in the Congo. It's, it's, it forms probably two-thirds of the Congo in terms of its coverage, and it goes up as far as Gabon. Uh, two of my colleagues have previously drilled wells uh, in the Mango. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they drilled about six wells, all were successful, producing between two and 400 barrels a day. Beyond that, the uh, Geno is the third target in this well. Um, some of our neighbours are producing significant, significant amounts of um, oil from the Geno. 
uh, on a daily basis. Um, we do have um, uh, um, completion plans for the mango uh, using uh, some new technology called fish bones, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, a far more economic way of stimulating the mango, which is quite a tight structure. The drilling program is about 45 days. Um, it's quite a quick well. So from the day we spud to the day we get into the, into the geno is, is about 45 days. And you, you mentioned this fish boning technique. Yeah. How, how advanced is that? And how, how much of a new innovation is this in the it's industry? It's not necessarily altogether new. It's, uh, it, it, it's, it's um, been backed by Statoil and some of the major oil companies who have actually used it. Um, one of my colleagues has also used it in Indonesia and understands the technology very well. Understood. And, and what kind of barrels per day are you looking at aiming for? Well, I think <laughs> this, it, out, of, out of the mango, I think we can look somewhere between 600 and 800 barrels a day. Uh, the geno is a little bit more of an unknown quantity because this has never been drilled from onshore before, even although um, we do straddle uh, the geno on our, on our acreage. Um, this will be the first time it's been drilled from onshore and been drilled on our acreage. But from, from when we were raising the funds, we were looking at about 2,500 barrels a day. Understood. So you're, you're, moving, you're potentially moving on track for, for the, that figure. We are, we are moving on track for the drilling of 103. Alex, if you'd be so kind, would you mind giving us an update on TLP 101 and 102? TLP 101 and 102 were, are two wells that we uh, told the market and investors we were going to work over from the very beginning. Uh, on TLP 101, which is currently the producing well at about 40 barrels a day, we said that we thought the solution would be to put in a pump into that well mm -hmm. to increase production. Uh, since we've been on site since the end of March, uh, we had a much closer look at 101 um, by taking apart the wellhead and things like this and discovering all sorts of nasty mm -hmm. detritus in it, which we've had analysed at a lab here in the UK. We're going to do a clean-up on well 101 first before we look at putting a pump in it to see if we can increase production that way because there is clearly some restrictions both in the, in the flow lines back to the separator and, uh, and from the well itself. Um, so we'll do all of that first before we do any other intervention on 101. Um, well 102 was the well that has been uh, previously drilled and uh, there was an attempt about 10 years ago to complete it, but that didn't work. We, um, we re-perforated this well. The re-perforation itself was successful, mm -hmm. uh, but we haven't got, at the moment, connection between the well uh, and the reservoir. This could be for, you know, a few reasons, but um, once again, with both, particularly with 102, uh, the solutions to what we do to bring it into production can only happen once we've got the rig on site for 103. So before we uh, re-perforated 102, we ran a number of tests in the well, a number of logs. One was a pulse neutron test. That quite unequivocally has confirmed that there are producible hydrocarbons in the R1 and the R2 uh, reservoirs within that well. Um, R1... Uh, you know, which previously hadn't been perforated, uh, we, we will probably look at perforating that alongside R2 uh, at a later date. Uh, but the, the, sorry, I've just kind of lost my train of thought now. Um, the tests have shown that there is producible uh, hydrocarbons in commercial quantities in 102. So back to you, David. What are the future plans for the company and when may you be looking to pay dividends? Well, the future plans will very much be driven by what the results are from 103. Because rather than sort of speculation that one often gets with, with E&P companies which are years away from production, mm -hmm. we'll know where we are yeah, in a broad production sense over the next few months. And what we'll be able to do then is look at, look at what a field development plan looks like. And depending on, on what results we get from the Geno or the Mango, um, we will come up with a, a plan to... to uh, roll out a full, sort of full field development to maximise the revenues. Now, we will balance this out at the same time 
with the discipline of paying dividends. One thing we're very clear about is that part of the different approach we take, in addition to um, you know, recognising our private equity background, a very clear and disciplined approach to costs, mm -hmm. which we maintained, and, and it's one of the reasons why we're very comfortable about being fully funded and having a cash buffer going through all of this, is the discipline of paying out income. Mm -hmm. um, and so we will, we will balance that as part of the process of developing a, a full field development plan, paying out, um, paying out a dividend. Now, the scope of it and the exact amount will have to be um, driven by what the exact production numbers we get, and we'll balance that as part of the field development plan. But we remain totally committed to that and to moving to becoming an income generating company uh, as quickly as possible. And do you have a, a figure in your head, is it a, a thousand barrels a day, two thousand barrels a day, three thousand, where that income or the dividend payment will start to kick in? Uh, certainly at a thousand barrels a day, we can certainly start paying a dividend. Um, uh, and so you know, this is something that we really would like to, to, to reach and, and look at going into next year. It's not, not something at all that's sort of kicked down the long grass for many years hence. Um, you know, assuming we get um, a substantial level of production out of 103 in the autumn, mm -hmm. next year we'll start the process of looking at dividends. So Alex, with regards to the team on the ground, can you just talk us through the... Yes, the, the, the team uh, is uh, myself and, and Oleg Shkoda, my colleague who's worked in the, the, the Congo before, and he's drilled some successful wells. But for the work program and the drilling program we've got with TLP 103, we have built up a, a team of um, highly experienced uh, drilling engineers, uh, completion specialists, uh, geologists and geophysicists to make sure that we get this absolutely right. Um, but we've kept it a very tight team. It's still a small team, um, and uh, you know they've they've all been working exceptionally hard to ensure the success of this. Superb. Sounds like you've got you've got everyone in place on the. Uh, we have. Right? We have. We happen. yes. And you know we all spend a significant amount of our time in the Congo. I think I've spent about nine or eleven weeks somewhere between since uh, the end of March. So David, look, looking at things as they are now, do you feel more confident? or less confident since you've raised the capital? I think, if anything, more confident. Um, you know, notwithstanding that um, the initial part of the, the work over on one or two didn't get the connection, uh, I think if we look at the, um, the work that Alex and Oleg and the team have been doing down in the Congo, the information that's flowed back, um, the feedback I'm getting from, from those people as to, as to what they think this field can become, and the fact that we have we've gone out and we've got the, um, uh, we've got bids out and tenders out for the drilling programme which actually meet budget and it's verified all the work with the hard work that was done by Oleg and putting that together. I think it's all coming together really rather well um, and what will come out of 103 will be what it will be but from everything we've seen so far I remain at least as confident and probably more confident than when we raise the money and we'll just have to see what, uh, what flows when, uh, when uh, 103 goes into the ground over the next few months. Well, I'm sure we'll all look forward to that, as will investors. Alex and David of Anglo-African Oil and Gas, thank you very much for joining Thanks us. Thanks very much. Thank you very much indeed.